Hey carnivores, welcome back. Al from Eat More Vegans here. And in this edition of Is Wagyu Worth It? We're gonna be doing filet mignon. We're gonna be comparing filet mignon from Snake River Farms, American Wagyu Gold filet mignon, with filet mignon cut from a whole tenderloin I bought at Costco. I'll show you the best way to cook them and we'll see how big of a difference there is when we taste them. Stick around. Okay, let's jump right in. So American Wagyu beef, is it worth it? So we've done tests of New York Strip, our first video ever actually. It turns out it was worth it. We did tests of uh, ribeyes, also worth it, but the jury was a little bit out, not everybody agreed. Now we're gonna be doing filet mignon. So this is a filet mignon from Snake River Farms. I've got two of them here actually. And you can see really intense marbling, even though filet mignon is not known for marbling. So I've also got four filets that I cut from a whole tenderloin. You probably saw that video a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link at the end and in the description. So these are filet mignon that I cut from that whole tenderloin. So what's the difference? So first of all, the American Wagyu costs about three times as much as cutting your own prime from a whole tenderloin. But second of all, you can see a lot more intense marbling, which you don't usually get marbling in filet mignon. You get a little bit, but not a lot. Filet is not known for marbling. It's not a working muscle, that tenderloin. It's known for tenderness because there's not a lot of connective tissue, again, because it's not a working muscle. So I'm expecting these both to be super tender. I'm expecting the Wagyu to be more flavorful, but I'm not sure. So let's get this side-by-side -side comparison started. Okay, no surprise if you've been here before, when we do beef, our first step is always doing a dry brine. A dry brine is just salt that we put on the meat and we let it sit overnight. So uh, I'm using kosher salt. This is just Morton's kosher salt you can get at the grocery store or on Amazon. And I'm gonna put a pretty liberal coating and I'm gonna make sure that I get the sides and the bottom get a pretty even distribution. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen dry brining before, all I'm doing is putting salt on. The salt is gonna pull the excess moisture out. Then that moisture is gonna get pulled back in with the salt and the excess moisture is gonna evaporate while it's in the refrigerator overnight. Okay, dry brining's that easy. I'm just gonna put this in the refrigerator. It's gonna stay there overnight. And when we come back tomorrow, you're gonna see steaks that look very different. Be right back. Hey, welcome back. Some of you are wondering why there are two giant briskets sitting on the table here when we're doing a filet mignon video. Some of you have probably figured it out and that's because I'm gonna get ready to use an ingredient that I've been promising to show you guys how to make and I'm showing you proof that I'm gonna make it. So we're gonna be using Wagyu tallow as our binder. And yes, I know I've been promising. So here's the deal. On Thursday, I'm gonna be filming the another battle is Wagyu worth it. I'm gonna be doing the Snake River Farms Wagyu brisket versus this prime brisket from Costco. And from the fat from the Wagyu brisket, I'm gonna make tallow and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So it's coming, it's coming in just a few weeks. If you wanna learn how to do that and you're not a subscriber, make sure you smash that subscribe button, click follow on Facebook, Instagram, every place that you, uh, you wanna follow us. So let's go ahead and get back to our fillets. So as you can see, as you look at these, that salt has had a miraculous impact. All of the marbling is way more pronounced. You can see this dark meat and intense marbling in the Wagyu steaks, and you can see really nice marbling in the prime steaks uh, all the way across. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna start with my binder. I'm using Wagyu tallow, and I already showed you the proof that you're gonna be learning how to make Wagyu tallow soon. And I'm just gonna cover all six of these fillets. Now we're just gonna season these with pepper. We don't wanna confuse the flavor profiles. We wanna really be able to taste the difference between the Wagyu and the prime. Okay, that's all we're doing for seasoning. So while these come up to room temperature, let's go get the grill fired up. I'll meet you at the grill.
Hey, welcome back to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Darth, the extra large big green egg. Darth is running at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, running a Fogo Premium Hardwood Charcoal. And we're gonna get started by putting our fillets on Darth, and we're gonna smoke them up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna stop short because we wanna have room to sear them and bring the temperature the rest of the way up to 130 degree perfect medium rare. So let's go ahead and get them on the grill. Now you'll notice that I have uh, temperature probes in one of the Wagyu fillets and one of the prime fillets. And that I'm gonna plug into my Thermalwork signals so that I can keep track of the temperature while they're cooking. So I'll be back in about an hour when these get to 150. Okay, according to the Thermalworks app, after only 45 minutes, our Wagyu steaks are at 110. Uh, the prime steaks are still going, which isn't a surprise with that high fat content. I expect the Wagyu to cook a little faster. So we're gonna go ahead and take the Wagyu steaks off of Darth, and we're gonna let the prime steaks continue to come up. We're gonna wrap them in aluminum foil so they can rest and, uh, and stay warm. Okay, it's been a little over 10 minutes and now the prime fillets are ready. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those off and wrap them as well. And we're gonna set up for searing. Now I asked you guys yesterday on the YouTube community post how you guys wanted me to sear and four out of five of you said cast iron. So we're gonna be searing in a cast iron skillet on Darth. So stick around while I set that up and then you get to watch it sear. Okay, as you can see, I got the top vent wide open. I got the bottom vent wide open. All that air is coming in through Darth. He's gonna get hot fast. We're gonna get up to probably seven or 800 degrees in that cast iron skillet. And then we're gonna sear those steaks. Stick around. Okay, Darth is over 700 degrees. That cast iron's gotta be smoking hot. It's time to sear. Before I open it up and do that real quick, you can probably hear Yoda in the background. Uh, Yoda's our uh, Yoda YS 1500 pellet smoker. And on there, I'm doing lamb spare ribs. So if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when that video comes out. All right, let's do this. Welcome back to the kitchen. That was exciting, wasn't it? So if you've ever wondered whether there's such a thing as having your cast iron or your grill too hot to sear, I guess you know now what happens when you've got the cast iron really hot and you put butter in. But it looks like we're gonna be okay. I did a quick sear and I think we're still gonna have some amazing steaks to uh, try. So if you've been here before, you know Leah. If you're new here, Leah's my nine-year-old, my nine-year-old food critic who often, but not always likes my food, right? And then a new guest on the show, this is my friend Ron. I've known Ron longer than most of you have been alive, but we're now neighbors again after decades and Ron's tasted my cooking, but he's never been on the show before. So welcome Ron. Thank you very much, Al. It's always great to meet with you. Ah, uh, uh, you, you, see, you see what he did there? Yeah, see, four dad jokes. That's what you get, you get two dads on the set, you get lots of dad jokes. No, <laughs> I'll spend okay. all day on this set, it's so beautiful. So here's the deal, filet mignon, that's all I'm gonna tell you, other than they're different. They're all taste different. They're all, they're gonna taste different. So we're gonna taste two steaks. We're gonna taste one from over here and one from over here. 
And Leo, you're gonna pick which one from over here. Ron, you're gonna pick which one from over here. And all you know right now is that they're filet mignon. All right? So Leo, do you have some uh, some cocktails to pass out? Ron, what are you and I drinking? This is a killer cab. All right, and uh, Leo, you having wine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. What do you see your wine? Cranberry and raspberry, perfect pairing for a filet mignon. All right, so uh, Ryan, you're the guest. Do you want to pick which one we're cutting first? Let's go with one closest to me. All right, the one closest. All right, so Ron, what we do here is I'm going to cut four pieces. That looks like that is done perfectly. And uh, there are three of us here on the set, right? Uh, and so there's one piece for Leah. That one's for you. And there's one for Ron. And there's one for me. And then, of course, this one. This one's for you guys, so you enjoy this. This is uh, steak number one. All right, are we ready? Amen. All right. Cheers. 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 <laughs> yeah? All right, Leah does MTY, moist, tender, yummy. Leah, moist? Yeah, one thumb, two thumbs. Ron, two thumbs moist, tender. Yeah, two thumbs, tender. Two thumbs. Yummy, I didn't do a lot of spice to it. Did we taste some beef? All, All the thumbs, oh. okay. All right, so Leah, which one of these are we gonna try? Did you guys like yours, MTY? Okay, good. Which one of these do you wanna cut open? Big one or the small one? Small one, okay. Here we go. Ooh, that looks pretty juicy, huh? All right, also done. Rare, medium, rare. Oh, that took a while to chew. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. All right, there's a piece for Leah. Smaller, good. There's a piece for Ron. All right, this one's for you guys, enjoy that. This one's for me, you ready? Cheers. Cheers, salud. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think? All right, MTY. Moist? Yep. Tender? Yep. Yummy? It's definitely different from the last steak. Yeah. It's definitely yummy. All right, so you ready for this? Oh my, my. This steak I cut up from a tenderloin that I got at Costco. The whole thing was $120, that steak. Probably cost about $15. Amazing. This one is an American Wagyu filet mignon from Snake River Farms. Cost about 60 bucks. So like four times as much. I knew the difference was gonna be that they were Wagyu. Yeah, could you tell this one was Wagyu? Yes. Yeah, okay, could okay. you tell? Excuse me, it's so delicious. <laughs> Can we do a second and third and fifth take because I would have more. Yeah, um, well, you know, maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Did you bring your wallet? I <laughs> I could tell a little bit, but the, the distinction is, I mean, I'm gonna it's, go buy it's stock subtle, right? Costco right now. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I think we've got the right conclusion. If it's a special occasion, that Wagyu, definitely something you wanna do. For your everyday dinner, I think the beef tenderloin cut into filet mignon is a great deal. And if you wanna know how to do that, how to break down a tenderloin, I'll put that video right here. Uh, if you've already seen that one, I also did a Chateaubriand, I'll put down here. And in the meantime, happy holidays. Happy holidays, cheers. Enjoy meeting you. <laughs> See you next time on Eat More Beef.